Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. And uh, I do want to let you know that you can support us on a one-time basis electronically, either going to support.greatdetectives.net or by sending a donation with the Zelle app to box13 at greatdetectives.net. And I want to thank Jeffrey and Despina for supporting the show in that way. And I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Despina. Or you can mail in your donation to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 159 13 Boise, Idaho 83715. Or you can become one of ongoing Patreon supporters at patreon.greatdetectives.net. And I do want to welcome Jason as our latest Patreon supporter at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. And you can support the show with a monthly contribution at patreon.greatdetectives.net. Now it's time for today's episode of Rocky Jordan. Original air date July 10th, 1949. And this one is The Broken Wing. Time now for Rocky Jordan. Not far from the mosque Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Café Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Café Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against a backdrop of antiquity. Tonight's story, The Broken Wing. There's a saying I've heard around Cairo that all a man needs for happiness is good food and good companions. Me, I add one thing more. That's lots of sleep. So naturally, I don't like it when somebody comes pounding at my tambourine door at 2 o'clock in the morning. But that's what happened. And the pounding got wilder and wilder. So I finally got up, put on my shoes and a robe, and went down the balcony steps into the cafe. Mr. Jordan! I beg you! Open the door! All right! Cut off the noise. I'm coming. Please, Mr. Jordan, wait me. I switched on the front light. Through the door glass, I could make out a stooped figure, gray-bearded in burnous and fez. I threw the latch, opened the door, and he bowed down, groveling at my feet. I right, look, Buster. Just get up and state your business. Oh, Mr. Jordan, my true effendi. I come to you on my knees. Ben Abram. It is I, Ben, of the once honored house of Abram. Ben Abram, you don't have to bow down to me. You should know that. Thus, I express my distress, Mr. Jordan. Well, look, if there's something wrong, tell me. My good Effendi, you will recall that when you first came to Cairo, I was able to do you a small service. Oh, you bet I remember. You stood between me and certain of your own people who want to give me trouble. Believe me, I've never forgotten it. It was not with the thought of ever asking a service in return. Sure, I knew that. I owe a great debt to you, Ben Abram. Mr. Jordan, I must entrust to you my greatest treasure for you to guard and protect. A treasure? Well, sure. There are many things I cannot explain to you, my Effendi. You must only trust. I trust you just as you trust me. It has been written, a promise is a man's most priceless gift. You have my promise. Now, where is his treasure? Allah be pleased. Wait here for the moment. And Abram ducked quietly down the sidewalk to a dark doorway. In another second, he was coming back. But this time, he wasn't alone. Just two steps behind came someone else. And I didn't see who it was until he stepped aside to tenderly draw her before me. A slight but erect figure in native robes. And all I could see was her soft, dark eyes above the veil that covered her face. Mr. Jordan, my only daughter... Tarina. Your daughter? Mashallah. She 
is my treasure. Guard her with your life. Oh, wait a minute, Ben Abram. You can't be leaving her with me. I have no choice. It is your promise. Oh, I know I promise. But... Farewell, Tarina, my child. Saida, my father. I commend her to you, Mr. Jordan. Hide her quickly. I'll have protect Ben Abram, wait. Ah. Ah. This beats anything yet. My master is not pleased. Oh, everything's just fine. Great. I am most happy, my master. Look, would you mind not calling me... Well, skip it. As you wish, my master. It's just that uh, there's no place for a girl like you. But you are here. Uh, that's just it, I... My uh... father says that you will protect me. From what, Tarina? He does not permit me to tell. But in all else, I am at your command. Uh, sure. What now? Where do you want me to sleep? Sleep? Oh, uh... Up those back steps, it's all yours. But will you not show me? Yeah, that's the way you want it. Up this way. I will follow my master. Uh, there's the bed. Fresh sheets are over there. Where will you sleep? Uh, outside, lady. Just give me time to get a few things out of here. Uh, wait, Serena. Yes? What happened to the veil? In her own quarters, a woman does not wear the veil. Did you not know? Uh, no. I trust my master will sleep well. Thanks. Then I was outside, but I still had my problem. A girl with the innocent round face of the Nile people of foreigner rarely sees. A face that trusted me for protection. From what? I had no idea. I started for my office downstairs, then changed my mind and bedded down on the stair landing just outside the door. The floor was hard, and the strange puzzle that had been handed me didn't help with the sleep. But I finally dozed off. I slept for maybe two hours, and I was suddenly sitting up wide awake. I slammed the door open in time to see two big robed figures coming in through the shattered window from the adjoining roof. I made a dive for the first one. It was like tackling a small pillar. He wrestled me more like a bear than a man. I got a lucky chance, and he went over my head and spoke. I was set for the second one, and my fist drove him back. He lunged at me. I ducked and let him go by and turned to meet number one. My master, the chair! I saw the chair coming down, but I was too late. It caught me above the left ear. I was on the floor telling myself to get up, only I didn't. When I finally cleared away some of the cobwebs, the room was empty. From below, I heard the crash of a door being broken open. I threw on some things in quick time, was down through the cafe, through the open door, and out onto the street. Far off down the dark street, I heard running footsteps, and I followed. They were always far enough ahead, so I couldn't see. When I reached the Sharia Ragoon, they were still nowhere in sight. I hesitated, and I stopped as a little form moved out of the shadows. Bakshish, Effendi. Bakshish for a poor blind man. Uh, how much does it cost to see a few things? Oh, Effendi, I am a helpless man, very poor. A couple of big Egyptians with a girl. Which way they go? Uh, but the, the dark, it is everywhere. I see nothing. No bakshi. Here, yeah, yeah. here. Let's help. Ah, the, the piastas. But wait, Effendi, wait. Come on, you don't have to test them. They're good. As you say, Effendi, they are genuine. Now, what do you see now? Only two piastas. There's some more, but not till you tell me. Ah, suddenly the eyes of this humble man pierce the veil. I'll make it four piastas. Uh, they went into that great white house over the Nile. Now, dear, go buy yourself some carrots. Muta In two minutes more, I had reached the great house on the Nile, all white, a symbol of power in Egypt. A front gate led to the wide courtyard, and I kept going past the fountain toward the main door till two guards quickly moved from their rooms to bar my way. The intruder will be gone. Uh, I got lots of business here. The house of Sheikh El Had Bey sleeps. Well, let's wake him up. Back. The unbeliever is asking trouble. A lot of trouble you don't want to get mixed up in, brother. To the streets with you. It is a command. Yeah, well, I'm going the other way. Shabbat! Fata, it is El Had Bey. Who comes to disturb the quiet of my house? An Americani, master. Let him approach me. Mm. 
guards let go of my arms, and Sheik El Hat Bey waited on the steps before the door. I couldn't help being fascinated with what I saw. Not the colored robes, or the fez that topped a slim face accented by a well-clipped beard. It was something perched on his shoulder. A Baza falcon. Its beady eyes, hooked beak, and talons gleaming in the moonlight. By what right does an infidel come at this hour? Little case of kidnapping, Elhad Bey. What is your name? Name's Rocky Jordan. Now, where's Tarina? She is quite safe. She is of no interest to such as you. Think again. Tarina was sleeping at my cafe. Mashallah. She was brought there by her father, Ben Abram. I promised to protect her. You know what a promise means. It was not yours to give. But you admit Tarina was brought here against her will. By the orders of my honored nephew, Fingal Jarus. I, as his guardian, since the death of his father, give my blessing. Your nephew sent those two muscle boys to drag the girl from her bed? It was his right. Yeah, well, not in my books, El Bey. Mr. Jordan, it is obvious you have much to learn of the ways of the East. Until then, you had best accept my word. What about Ben Abram's word? It is like dirt at my feet. Supposing the police get wind of this, what will they think? May I suggest that you go now and find out? And leave this house in peace. Yeah, not till I see Tarina and get her you story. You will not defile her again by your presence? Let her decide that. Then I have no choice. Batar, Shamak! Throw this unbeliever into the streets! I will, master. I rolled over three times, got up and started back for the gate. Till I saw the knives the guards had pulled out from somewhere. Then I knew getting to Torino right now would be about as easy as stealing the Sphinx. But it looked like the best thing I could do was to go to Ben Abram and admit I'd failed him. That took me all the way across Cairo to the East Hills. When I got to Ben Abram's house, it was empty. There was no sign of him, so I waited in the court. He finally showed up almost an hour later. He came staggering in at the point of exhaustion. Great red marks across his face and his robe spotted with blood. I got to him and helped him to a bench. Please. Please, my friend. My welfare is nothing. But you've been hurt. Look, I'll get you to a doctor. No, tell me of my daughter. Why do you not guard her? I've got bad news, Ben Abram. Oh, tell me quickly. Tarina's in the house of El Hat Bay. It cannot be. I know, I promised. But... Well, two men got in from the roof. They were a little too much for me. They got her away, and I followed them to Sheik El Hat Bay's house. Then there is nothing more. She was taken there by orders of his nephew. El Hat Bay told me he had the right... Yes, it is as he says. No man has that right. No, I think it's time you made a few things clear. Yes, I must tell you now. Mr. Jordan, I loved my daughter more than my life. It was my desire that she marry in dignity. It has been written, an unwed daughter is like a broken wing. Sure, Abram. Three years ago, Mr. Jordan... While Tarina was but a child, I promised her as wife to Fingal Jarus, the nephew of El Had Bey. But since then, I have learned many things about Jarus. He is a kelp, a vicious man who would bring her nothing but sorrow. I think I'm beginning to see. A few days ago, Jarus came to me demanding that I bring Tarina to him as wife. I begged him to release me from my promise, but he would not listen. Yeah, but as her father... Oh, no, Mr. Jordan. She was his... By right of our law. And Fingar would not listen. He threatened to take her from me. I could not entrust her to one of my own people. That's when you brought her to my place. Yes, I was willing to face dishonor to suffer humiliation. But my daughter must be protected from that man. What happened to me was nothing. Yeah, looks like I let you down. I am only grateful for your efforts, Mr. Jordan. Now... There is no way of getting her back. But look, we can do something. No. Man's efforts are as nothing against the will of Allah. It was his decree that my promise be fulfilled. I tried a couple of arguments, but all I met with was despair. I could tell Ben Abram wanted to be left alone, so I finally walked away. Just as I reached the gate, a black limousine pulled up. The back door opened, and after carefully adjusting his fez, out stepped Captain Sam Sabaya, Cairo Police. You will stay with me, Jordan. What's the complaint, Sam? You will learn in good time once I have talked with Ben Abram. He's right there in the courtyard. Come along. Uh, 
Ben Abram. Bismillah, Sepayope. It is with regret that I do not come as a guest of your house. Then for what purpose? To ask if you last night were in the home of Sheikh al Bey. You do not answer. Supposing he was, Sam. What about One him? moment, Jordan. Ben Abram, the marks on your face as from sharp claws. How do you explain them? It is as you say. They are the marks of the falcon. I was at El Had Bey's house. With the bird, he drove me away. Okay, Sam, maybe you'll be interested to know I was there, too. I do know. Jordan, have I not warned you to keep away from such affairs as this, which do not concern you or any other foreigner? Abram entrusted Serena to my care. To me, what has happened is kidnapped. I know our ways aren't always the same. Indeed, they are not, Jordan. Look, how about getting to the point? The nephew of El Had Bey is dead, slain by the knife. <gasps> You're not accusing one of us. Perhaps that is not necessary. Wait. At what time was Fingal killed? But a short time after your daughter was brought to the house. Very well. It is best that I confess. Ben, I... I killed Fingal. Now do with me what you will. <laughs> You are listening to The Broken Wing, tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Don't miss the brand new comedy show coming up tomorrow night on most of these same stations. And steady now, it's called Breakfast with Burroughs. Yes, the fellow who wrote The Girl with the Three Blue Eyes, the man who gets up so late he has breakfast in the middle of Monday evening, will be on hand with a bright, new, highly original program. And as though you hadn't guessed, his first name is Abe. So tomorrow, don't please don't go to bed until you've had breakfast with Abe Burroughs on CBS tomorrow night at 6.30. Now we return you to Cairo and tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan, The Broken Wing. Well, ordinarily, I don't mix in family feuds, especially in Cairo. But I owed a debt to Ben Abram. When he entrusted his daughter, Tarina, to my protection, I had no choice. And I failed. Tarina was captured by her promised husband. Shortly after that, he was killed. When confronted with the news, Ben Abram confessed to the murder. Sam Sabaya took us to headquarters, got my story, and put Ben Abram in a cell. Then he let me stay with the old man for a few minutes, and I tried to get some sense out of him. My good Effendi, it is for the best. I don't see it that way, Ben Abram. But you must not concern yourself about me. I just don't think you're a man who would kill, that's all. Mr. Jordan, can you not see? What does murder mean to a soul that is already lost? Tarina is now free from the rash promise I once made. Look, you still have time to change the confession. No, no please leave me now. I ask but one thing of you. Yeah? The happiness of my daughter. I leave her in your hands forever. I left him then. Ben Abram had given me a tall order, but I had to do what I could. Anyhow, I wanted to clear up a few things in my own mind, so I went back down to the big white house of Sheikh El Had Bey on the banks of the Nile. There was a steady stream of friends and relatives going in by way of the court. The bay was there at the door, greeting the mourners. The falcon still perched on his shoulder. Have I not sent you once from this house? I uh, just came back to set things right, El Hadbe. At another time, Jordan. My most gracious El Hadbe. What would you have, woman? It is I whom you summon for a few pieces of silver. I come to mourn for the departed one. It is well. Take the silver. Uh, Retire now to the upper chambers and well with the others. Not a shock here. No, no, Molly. No, no, Molly. A moment, woman. Your grief is most restrained. Perhaps a few more pieces of silver. Bay is most generous. Anomaly! Hey, now, uh, how about a word with me, eh? Have you not gone? 
I just want you to know, getting mixed up in this wasn't my idea. You have come to tell me that... She Gilhart Bay, the last thing I want to do is meddle in the affairs of your people. I hope you believe that. I regret very much the death of your nephew. I will make peace with you, Ismailer. Thanks. Do you mind telling me where Tarina is? She has no place in my house now. The girl is gone. Where? I do not know. I see. Oh, uh, one thing more. I'd like to see Fingal's body. It has not been prepared for burial. As a special favor? Then I'll go. Very well. I cannot refuse. This way, please. The adjoining room. My nephew is here. The only son of my elder brother. Yeah. I pray you spend little time. A uh, bandage on his chest. The knife was there. You think Ben Abram did it? By his own confession. For this outrage against my house, he also will die. Well, I took my cue and got out. Elhard Bay had no reason that I could see to lie about Tarina. I knew she wasn't there. But there was no stopping now till I'd found her and set Ben Abram's mind at rest. I took the long trip back out to Abram's place, but Tarina wasn't to be found. I tried a few people I knew were Abram's friends, and they'd seen nothing of her. For an American man, to find a veiled Muslim girl poses too many problems. And I was finally back at Ben Abram's cell, telling him his daughter was gone. You must find her, Effendi. Where would she be? What's she hiding from? She's a tender child, only frightened. This has been a terrible ordeal for her. You still say you killed Fingal? There was no other way. Can you not see... I had a look at Fingal. I'm uh, surprised you went for his throat. It had to be done quickly. The knife at the throat is certain. Then, Abram, you got a promise from me that still stands. But from now on, I got to have the truth. I do not understand. Fingal was stabbed in the chest. Only you didn't know that. Not the throat at all. It does not matter. Well, it does to me. Now, come on, admit it. You didn't kill him. Say what you will. Uh, I thought so. You're covering for Tarina, aren't you? You think she did it? She could have. Please forget this thing, Mr. Jordan. I am an old, disgraced man. She's young with a full life before her. But the fact that you didn't do it... I alone am responsible for her sorrow. Should I not pay the penalty? I'm not the one to decide that. Mr. Jordan, before Allah, I swear the guilt shall remain on my shoulders. That's when I left Ben Abram. From now on, it was up to Tarina. She'd have to make the choice. But right then, I was kind of beat. I went back to the tambourine drew a beer from the tap and went up the steps from my back to my room where I could do some thinking. Where I'd find Tarina or where the search would begin was anybody's guess. But when I opened the door to my room, that much was answered. I await my master. Tarina! Where have you been? It was the command of my father that I remain here. I return as soon as possible. But how? Nobody saw you. A veiled girl could not enter by the door of this place. I came as the others last night. By the roof. You sure know how to get around. My master. I would learn of my father. Where is he? He's in jail, Tarina. For the murder of Fingal. But what does my father say? He confessed. To me and everybody else. It is as I feared. I prayed to Allah it would not be so. Yeah, now it's up to you whether he stays there or not. I do not understand... I would do anything. So happens I know Ben Abram didn't kill Fingal. You say he confessed. Is it not so? Only to protect you, Serena. He thinks you did it. And maybe I do too. No. No, that is not true. I said it's up to you, Serena. Keep quiet and you know what'll happen to your father. He thinks that'll make you happy, but I don't. My master, let me speak. It is true that my father gave me the knife, charging me to protect myself. When I was taken before Fingal in the house of his uncle, he swore he would have me as wife. It was then that I drew the knife. Uh, let's have the rest of it. I drove it at his chest. But I am weak and he was strong. The knife only scratched him. He threw me back in great fury and left the room, shouting I should be taken to the harem. 
I did not see him again. You think anyone's going to believe that, Serena? They have only to look at the wound, my master. Speaking. Uh, Rocky, Sam. Yes, Jordan. Uh, has there been an autopsy on Fingal's Jerus? Auto- Certainly not. For what possible reason do you ask? Well, you better do it, Sam. You'll find out some things. I will do no such thing. Besides, the burial procession leaves within the hour. Then get busy. There still may be time to stop it. Jordan, you know that cannot be done without cause. All you have to do is check on Sheik El Hot Bay's background. He was uh, quite a gambler, Sam. Find out how he stands financially. You'll get a surprise. What are you driving at, Jordan? Fingal was the only son of Elhad Bey's elder brother. Now they're both dead. Who stands to benefit most by Fingal's death? That is of no consequence. We have the confessed murderer. But it's all wrong. Now hurry, Sam. Meet me at Elhad Bey's house in ten minutes. Jordan, you will not go to that place at such a time. Think again, Sammy. I'll see you there. What would you have me do, Master? Stay right here, Tarina. Keep those pretty little fingers crossed. I was off again for the big white house of Sheik Elad Bey. This time, I knew the reason why. In nine minutes flat, I was there, and I didn't make it any too soon. The funeral procession was already moving out across the court. They had a drum beating, and along with the wailers, all in all, it promised to be a first-class affair. Right in the lead came Sheik Elad Bey, falcon and all. Stand from the gate, Jordan. You're uh, rushing things a little, aren't you, Elad Bay? Can you not see the procession has begun? Why not the usual three-day wait? Afraid the police and come nosing around, maybe? Silence. The infidel would not desecrate the dead. Yeah, uh, by the way, just how did Fingal die? By the knife of Ben Abram. Sure. You want your nephew buried real quick so everyone will keep on believing that, right? Of what do you speak now? Supposing an autopsy proved the knife wound was nothing but a scratch. You knew Tarina tried to stab Fingal, but didn't kill him. So you decided to finish the job. Guard your words, Jordan. How'd you do it? With poison? Well, it's easy to find out, Elhud. The main thing is, you knew the blame would go to either Tarina or Ben Abram. You didn't care which. And you'd have the family of wealth. Guards! Remove the lying infidel! They needn't bother. I was just going for a chat with the Cairo police. Before I could turn, the giant falcon was on me, striking with terrific power and driving me to the ground. I scrambled to my feet, shielding my face with my arms as the bird knifed in with its sharp claws. My shirt was in ribbons, my arms and head slashed in a dozen places. Now the falcon began circling and striking with its powerful wings, driving me down again. I braced myself for the third strike, but it never came. It was just one shot, and the winged killer lay dead at my feet. Uh, maybe it was loss of blood or exhaustion or downright fear. Maybe all three. Anyhow, for a while after that, I didn't know much. It was water on my face that brought me out of it. I was lying by the fountain. The procession had vanished except for a couple of police at the gate. I was getting personal attention from Sam Sabaya. No, no, no. Lie quietly, Jordan. I will soon have the bleeding stopped. Who is it? Is there anything you can't do, Sam? <laughs> when one must contend with your unpredictable escapes, Jordan, much knowledge is necessary. Uh, what about Sheik Elhard? As you said, Jordan, Fengal's knife wound was superficial. The Sheik is being held pending an autopsy. Oh, the... And my hunch was right. The fact that the Sheik made this bizarre attempt on your life is proof enough at the moment. What about Ben Abra? I have ordered his immediate release. Uh, Jordan, is uh, there nothing more you wish to ask? What about? Tarina. As Ben Abram reminds me, a promise is a man's most priceless gift. What are you getting at? He says he has promised his daughter to you, Jordan. Oh, no. Not on your life. Look, look, you've got to talk to him. <laughs> Calm yourself, Jordan. I have convinced him that you will release him from his promise. You will not have to marry the girl. <laughs> Sam, why don't you mind your own business? It's...
It's CBS again at this same time next week for another story of adventure and intrigue when we take you back to Cairo and the Cafe Tambourine run by Rocky Jordan. Rocky Jordan, written by Gomer Kuhl and Larry Roman, stars Jack Moyles in the title role and was produced by Cliff Howell and directed tonight by Gordon T. Hughes, with original music by Richard Arant. Larry Thor speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surface series. Oh, and a madam's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. I like this story. It dealt with a pretty complex uh, cultural issue and how Rocky would deal with it. And also showcases the strength of his character and his dedication to trying to help people out, as well as honoring uh, friendships. And of course, a great moment with Sam at the end. (laughs) All right, well, uh, listener comments and feedback, and we start with this letter from Jack. Thank you so much for the great service you're providing. It's a wonderful accompaniment for working in the garden and around the house. Uh, You discuss accents occasionally. Please talk about the origins of your own unique accent. Well, I've talked about this before, but I think it's probably been a year or so. Uh, In terms of origins of my accent, I think part of it comes from uh, my parents. Both were born in Washington State. My dad was born in Spokane. Mom was born in uh, more rural parts. My dad was a Green Beret, and he was stationed down at Fort Bragg back when the Special Forces were stationed there. And he picked up a bit of the Southern accent down there. You know, it wasn't an overpowering bit, but even years after he left North Carolina in the South, that never quite left him. Being homeschooled, I spent a lot of time around both my parents, and I think that would definitely be the biggest influence. But we traveled around quite a bit, though it was mostly in the Northwest. A lot of time in Washington State, and several months in Oregon, Idaho, and Montana, We did like a tour where we went through several southern states back when I was 10, and then when we were 11, we settled in northwest Montana. And so those would be the influences. And if there's an origin in there, that's probably where you'll find it. Uh, Thanks so much for the question. Then we have this from Neil, who emails in, Hi, Adam. I've been listening to the show for several years now, and I've enjoyed most of the shows you played, as well as your introductions and commentaries. I can tell you put a lot of work into making an enjoyable show, and I look forward to a new episode every day at lunchtime. Thanks for all you do. How many listeners have asked for the shadow on The Great Detectives, and you've explained uh, why that's not going to happen for at least two reasons. The legal and copyright status of the surviving uh, Shadow episodes is uncertain. And two, the Shadow has many story elements that don't really fit with the detective genre. S- strictly speaking, it's not a detective show, and it could even be con- considered a superhero show. Given all those problems with the Shadow, have you ever considered adding the Green Hornet to the Great Detectives? He's much closer to a detective than to a superhero. He wears a mask, but he doesn't have superpowers. He can't fly for Superman or make himself invisible like the Shadow. Like Batman, he uses cool gadgets, mostly a gas gun and a fast car, to give 
uh, himself the functional equivalent of superpowers. He doesn't fight ghosts, supervillains, or crazy mad scientists as the Shadow sometimes does, but goes up against very common forms of graft, racketeering, and corruption that would have been very familiar or believable to a 1930s and 40s audience. What's more, he uses his wits just as much as his gadgets or his fists to beat the bad guys, outsmarting them by clever maneuvering, cross and double cross. I think Green Hornet would make a great addition to great detectives, and I hope you'll consider it. All the best. Well, thank you so much uh, for your uh, uh, comments, Neil. I definitely appreciate it. I love uh, Green Hornet, uh, but to be honest, um, I think uh, that in many ways he would fit less well than the Shadow does. His focus isn't really on solving mysteries as much as it is finding ways to trap the criminals. And you're right, the Green Hornet really is a master strategist, playing off uh, the criminals' fears and greed in order to get what he wants, while pretending to be a criminal himself. It's a really fun show, but I don't think it really does fit here. And I will say there have been some copyright issues with uh, the Green Hornet, though not near the level with uh, the Shadow. I'm only aware of one effort to get uh, Green Hornet material removed, and that was several years back now. But what would stop me is I don't think it particularly fits with the format, even though I really do love the series. And... I'd love it if I could do it as a podcast on a recurring basis. I did actually include a couple episodes of the Green Hornet in uh, the series I did, The War, a few years back. Thanks so much for the question, and that will do it for today. Join us back here uh, tomorrow for boston blackie and we'll be back again next wednesday with another episode of rocky jordan in the meantime send your comments to box 13 at greatdetectives.net follow us on twitter radio detectives and become one of our friends on facebook facebook.com slash radio detectives from boise idaho this is your host adam graham signing off